So I had a life crisis the other day because I was reading a novel and I was like, wow, what have I been doing with my time this semester? I've been reading books. I've been reading stories. And I thought, you know, other people are reading textbooks for their majors. Like, what am I doing with my life? I'm, I'm being exposed to all these fictional things and I'm thinking, okay, um, what am I going to walk away with? you know, after this is over, after I've spent years looking at these stories and getting into them. And, you know, and then I thought, well, okay, I don't need to have a crisis here. I'm an English major, and that's a good thing. You know, stories, they're important. And then I got thinking more about the nature of stories and how they actually kind of define human existence in a way, like narrative building. It's a very human thing. And this kind of actually goes back to childhood this kind of perception of like fiction versus nonfiction. You guys remember like going to the library and them being like, this is the fiction section. This is where the stories are and these are fairy tales and this is nonfiction. These are the facts. This is where you learn about life. And all the kids are like, oh I'm going to the fiction because I don't want to learn about life. Like this is boring. But I'm sorry, children, you are learning about life in the fiction section. You're actually learning you're being exposed to the way in which um, kind of human existence is formed by these narratives and these fictional stories. And so I guess what I want to talk about mostly is how the sto like stories are important in the human experience. And one thing that my creative writing professor said um, about stories was that stories are where we encounter humanness and potent levels because we usually avoid it during our daily lives. And I thought this was a pretty profound statement. And I think a lot of times it takes this lens of fiction to learn things about the real world that you don't really find in nonfiction all the time. And in one of my other classes, this is kind of related to stories, we've been talking about like modernist writers and then postmodernism. And this is kind of the era of time where people were like, man, we don't have any good stories and like look at the world it's really terrible and religion is kind of you know it's science is coming in people are abandoning religion and myth and these things that used to hold us together as a culture and then the postmodernists were kind of like okay so um, there's kind of a struggle here we don't have any of these stories to hold on to anymore and they're skeptical of the traditions and but like even in these people that are kind of depressing in their view of life, or it sounds like they are, um, we're, we're reading the novel White Noise. And even in like a book like this, there's a protagonist, Jack, who he kind of has this struggle with the concept of death because he's living in a world where um, we don't really have stories anymore, this postmodern world, to tell us like how to feel about death. So it's like this uncertain ending of life, and he doesn't know how to deal with it. And stories kind of come into it because although there aren't like these traditions to hold on to, um, his friend kind of comes along and says something like, well, Jack, um, he's like an academic, so it, it, he gets kind of into it. But basically it comes down to like, to plot is to live. Like we create plots and this kind of narrative drives our life, gives us goals, you know, sets us on a path and gives us meaning. And I thought this was a really interesting concept because even like these postmodernists who are thinking, we don't have stories, what's going on? We don't have myths, we don't have religion. They kind of discuss the way in which humans like seek out this narrative building and other things. Here they're seeking it out and saying like, oh, you plot to live and like other writings people look to science to give them some kind of framework for life. And so, yeah, to plot is to live, I thought was just an interesting way of connecting stories to just the way that we create meaning and systems in life. And it doesn't even just stop there. Like, stories don't just allow you to create goals to get through life. Like, they also allow you to create yourself and your identity. Um, just kind of the way that we go about life. We interact with people, we tell stories about ourselves. And a lot of times we're telling stories about ourselves because it helps us remind ourselves who we are 
And so you figure out who you are by telling these stories. And so I think it's quite powerful um, that we tell stories to remember things about ourselves and to figure out who we are, and that we tell stories to give ourselves some kind of goal. And so stories, even for the postmodernists who are like, oh, stories, they're, they're, they don't work anymore. This world, this world is weird. Um, they allow us purpose, and they allow us identity creation, and a way of viewing and experiencing our own humanity um, in a real, in a way that like real life and facts don't always allow us to do. And like, perhaps this fictional narrative um, is actually more powerful in people's lives. And perhaps we need to keep telling ourselves stories about magic and trolls and people that never existed because perhaps they matter. And perhaps we need to tell stories about ourselves to figure out who we are. And so to plot is to live. Um, to tell stories is to encounter our humanity in its most potent form. And I don't know what's more nonfiction than that. <laughs>